Hello everyone, I am Veos and welcome back to another video. This is going to have to be a quick one because I am actually working today, I'm trying to get as much overtime as I can. Now, this is going to have this is going to be about a mod actually. I've been getting a lot of questions about how to make a certain mod called Simple Construction work. How to make it work. Well, I can tell you that for me, uh, I actually had to put it into a new game, a completely new game. Not a new save, but an actually whole new game in order for it to work. Sometimes when it downloads into the game, it doesn't download correctly and it can come out kind of wonky. I know that seems like a lot of work, but it's worth it when you finally get the thing working. It took about two tries, and when I originally downloaded it the first time into my old game, I had a bunch of mods running already, like Vessel Mover and Restock and a few other things, all of which can be located in the, des in the description underneath the video, underneath all my videos. So my suggestion is to make sure you have a fresh game that's downloaded or loaded up on your computer, then add only the simple construction mod and let it run first. Make sure it's working. Then once you do that and it is working and everything's working, and you can build stuff in game and all that good stuff, then start adding one mod at a time because you never know which mods might clash with other mods. I can't say anything for CCAN. CCAN is its own little program and it does whatever it wants to do. But me personally, I just download them and manually put them in the folder. So once simple construction was finally working for me, Here's how you uh, here's how you use it. So the way simple construction works is that it uses the models or the parts that are already available in the actual game. Every single docking port in the game also becomes a potential portal in order to build outwards from it. The mobile processing lab allows you to do things like build rocket parts, and then it actually gives you a productivity factor of seven when you start building your craft files from it. Now the mobile processing lab gives you the highest amount of productivity. It's like a tiny little factory. You can use things like hitchhiker storage containers and passenger modules, but all of them only have a productivity of only four. So it's like a it's like a it's like a multiplier m m multiplier plier. Um, you know what I mean. Now what this means essentially that the more mobile processing lab units you have, or the more hitchhiker storage containers or passenger modules that you have, the more productive your little factory will be. But only if you fill them up with engineers. You can have all the mobile processing labs in the world, but if you only have one engineer, your productivity is going to be pretty much crap. Productivity basically means the speed at which you can build things. Normally a processing lab filled, filled up with engineers might take a day or two or even maybe three days before they build something of a significant size. For me personally, that's fine. That's, that's better than fine. That's like amazingly fast. But for some people, they want things instantly. So they might build something with a million mobile processing labs all over the place to instantly build something. I don't know if that's even possible, but if the math checks out, I don't see why not. But you only can really build things with engineers. If you had a bunch of mobile processing labs filled up with pilots or scientists, you wouldn't you wouldn't get anything at all. Now the two new parts that it does add but uses the same stock skin is a part that holds rocket parts and a part that holds metal. These are normally ore storage tanks. You have the large one, the medium one, and the small one. So when you add the mod, it adds two more small ones and two more medium ones and two more large ones of the ore storage tanks. The only difference is it doesn't store ore anymore, but rather rocket parts and metal. Now the things that change are not only the docking ports in order to build from them or outwards from them, and uh, of course the mobile processing lab and, the, and any other crew holding parts that can act as little factories, but also the convertotron can now process ore and turn it into metal, let alone fuels and everything else. It cannot make rocket parts, however. That has to be assembled via Kerbal inside of a crew cabin or mobile processing lab. Note that you can actually use a command module to produce like a mini factory kind of thing. However, your productivity factor is 0.25. In other words, there's no real room to do any building whatsoever because of course the command module is meant to command and pilot a craft, not actually build anything. However, there are there is room in there to maybe slowly put something together. So if you're in a pinch and you need something to be built, you could 
theoretically do it inside of a command module. So here we are. This is going to be a quick factory setup. You've got your power, batteries, your ore holding tank. It goes through the smelter, in which case you turn it into metal, which would go into the metal tank. You'd have the engineers put it, print out rocket parts by using the metal, and then the rocket parts would be stored in their own storage container, in which case you could use the docking port to go ahead and build stuff into the world. Now there is a flaw with the mod when it comes to building things out into the world. I've been in contact with the person who actually works on this and they said that in the recent download they fixed it. I have not had the opportunity or the time yet to download it and look at it. But if you download it and you see that the item which you're building is clipped into the docking port, there's a way around this. It's a quick fix. What's essentially happening is that the docking port has actually two connection points, one in the back and one in the front. Unfortunately, what's going on is that it's producing the craft from the docking point or not, not docking port, but the detachment point. It's producing crafts from the attachment attachment point in the back of the part instead of the front of the part. So what ends up happening is that it gets clipped into itself. Like I said before, I've been notified that this has recently been fixed, although I have not been able to download it and look at it myself. But if you're having problems, this is why I suggest using a small little cubic octagonal strut. It's very, very small so that the Kraken will ignore it if and when you release whatever it is you're building out into the world. And if it does ignore it, it'll just blow it up, in which case nothing will get hurt. It'll just crush it. So when you're building something to be produced from a factory, this is how you're going to construct it so that when it comes out of the factory, it comes out in the right way. So right now, all docking ports, when they produce something, they're producing it as if the docking ports are lying down. Remember that. So whenever you save a craft file, make sure that if it's a craft file that's elongated in any way, you save it pointing upwards so that when it finally comes out, it'll be pointing the right way. This is one of the reasons why you see all of my craft files Oops, oh, it's getting ready to go to work. You see all the crowd files, they're kind of pointed skywards. Let me click on the new work truck and load it up. See how it is? It's pointed skywards. And it's got a little cubic technical strut right there to separate it so it doesn't wig out. Now, if I was to if I was to save it like this, unfortunately, when it would be built into the world, it'd actually be built popping out kind of like this into the ground. The docking port would be like facing this way, and this would be coming out all crooked into the ground and all this are messed up kind stuff because like I said before the docking port acts as if it's pointed straight up so whatever you build make sure you save it pointed straight up like this that way when it comes out it comes out in the direction that you desire it to so a good rule of thumb is that when you're building something build from the nose up or nose sideways or whatever the case may be start off with your cubic or technical strut and then you can either make a docking port or whatever the case is you can start off with one of this if that's how you want to build your stuff but always take the cubic op technical strut or the, the part that you're building make sure your toggle snap is on hold down shift and ever so slightly pull it one click away and there you're done that's about the right size between connection points on the docking port that this thing is going to come out of so no matter what you're building when it finally comes out of the docking port let's say the docking port's this big guy it's going to connect to the one that's in the back right here like so but it's going to connect as it glitches through so it's more going to look like this this will allow it so that you have plenty of clearance between what it is you're building from the docking port which is being built from. So once you click the release button on the menu, which I'll show you in a minute, the docking port might fling out or explode or do whatever it wants to do, or maybe even might even drop right through, but your craft will be unharmed and it won't glitch through the whole building or the docking port. Okay, so quick menu tutorial in order to work simple construction. You should have an icon on your right screen. It's got like a little rocket with the sun underneath of it or a crest of some kind. It says EL. I'm guessing that's something rather launch pads. I forget what the darn E standard for, but you click on that because the simple construction mod actually uses this as part of its mod build. Extra planetary launch pads. There it is. So if you're already familiar with this, then you already know what to do. Basically, make sure that the pad that you want or the docking port that you want to select is selected. If you're not sure which one it is, you can click on this icon right here and this will highlight the docking port that's being 
being used, which in this case, it's this one right here, which is not the one we want. For me personally, and I'll click out, what I like to do is like to hover over the docking port that I want to use for construction, right click it, show UI, and it automatically selects it. So this is pad three. It takes the guessing work out of it when you're trying to figure out which pad you want to use or which docking port you want to build from. As you can see, my productivity is 4.64. Even though I have two of those mobile laboratories in here, I unfortunately only have one engineer. That's because the other engineers are off playing around somewhere. Those little footlets. So now that I have my pad or aka docking port selected, I'll click on select craft. In the select craft, you have your part, sub, space plane hanger, VAB. This is just trying to find the craft file. My parts that I'm looking for is in space plane hanger. I'm going to scroll down and we're going to get a, we're going to build a new generation two crew truck that I've been working on. Notice how, like I said before, it's in the upright position. That's so it can come out correctly when I build it. There's a load button on the very bottom of the window. Go ahead and click load. And there it is. Pad three. There's even a little green box that shows it's somewhat dimensions. I can tell that these are wheels right here because they're circular, which is pretty cool i must say that is pretty cool it's almost like the craft is concealed under a tarp as it's being worked on it also allows you to see if it's being if it's clipping through the ground or if there's something wrong with the build in, in question but it looks like we're good so this tells you what kind of parts are involved how many parts there are and if it's green that means you're good that means you have enough rocket parts to cover this as you can see on the right side of this other green number is how many parts we currently hold so that's plenty once you're happy with what you see here you click build it'll give you a time or estimate which is about three hours and 58 minutes in game time. So let's go ahead and fast forward until it's finished building. A little, a little bit of a bumpage there as it finalizes itself, but I'm gonna go ahead and warp to morning so it's not in the dark. And we'll warp to the afternoon, get some light on the subject. Okay, so here we are, the vehicle is ready. If you had clicked out of the menu, just go right back in it. It'll show you that it's ready 100% and you can click on the finalize build button on the bottom of the menu and there it is now remember what we did before with the uh, technical strut trick see how it's nice and nicely separated see how it's nicely separated right here looks real nice it's not clipped in or anything so what I'm gonna do first is I'm, I'm actually gonna click on the truck and undock it from the truck undock now I'm gonna click on the UI from the docking port that I just built the truck from show UI and I'm going to release the octagonal strut. And where is the octagonal strut? There it is. And it gets spit out harmlessly out of the way. Now you can play around with this and make it so it's flawless. But this is a good way of making sure that none of your crafts explode when they're being built or undocked or released from the factory. So this has been a re preview of Simple Construction. Like I said, this is the older version. The newer version, uh, that docking port thing has been fixed. I'll leave you a link below on the creator who I've been in contact with. He has a channel. Go ahead and give him some love and ask him any questions you need to ask him or whatever the case may be. And yeah, well, I, I got to get to work and uh, love you all. Please take care. Uh, if you have any questions, I'll try to get to them in the comments below when I can. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Bye-bye. You should really download this. It's a really amazing mod. Very low, very low frames per second hit. It's, it's perfect. It's perfect.